this is your first row it's your foundation row so I've marked it with F's this is row one and it's a yarn A row so it's made in this case pink so row two is a green row it's a yarn B row and we have to make 11 off stitches so all of the off stitches go into just the back loop of one in each stitch of each of your single crochets foundation row that's the second row row three is a yarn A row so you start again with yarn A where you attach your yarn but you begin with an on stitch whichever choice you went with whichever option if it was the option one you, it, it would go down into the front loop if it was a popcorn you would make five into that front loop because all of the on stitches are made into the stitch two rows below but because you're making this on stitch you're not now going to see this green row behind because that stitch covers it over and now we have a solid row along the bottom of drop down stitches whichever option you went with so they are now hidden and you've got this row along the bottom which is one row of solid plain pink in this case and all of your second row is hidden by those drop down stitches which link into your first row your foundation row so now we'll move on to the next row which is back to a green row now on row three when we made all these drop downs drop down on stitches we've left a lot of loops on the front and we've ended up with a flap like this two two flaps what we need to do is connect those flaps with lock stitches so that we don't end up with ridges like this on the back of the work because it makes it as you can see not and it doesn't lay flat it bends all over the place it isn't substantial and I know you know a lot of people are a fan of the flaps but I don't feel that that is as substantial as that when they are locked and I think you're going to get a hell of a lot more wear out of your work that had you you've it costs a lot of money well and you've put a lot of time into it so you obviously want it to last you know and that is way more hard wearing and warmer than that is I feel personally so to lock them like this you don't have to lock them if you don't want to but my pattern uses lock stitches and to lock them we do this every time in the top of a on stitch we put a lock stitch there is no other stitch that goes into the top of an on stitch than a lock stitch no matter what that on stitch is whichever option you choose to use for your on stitch it always gets locked so whenever you see an on stitch there is no other option of symbol except a lock stitch above it so that is now row four complete because they cannot be anything else the pattern now has written itself that's code okay on to row five so on row five which is a pink row I'm going to start doing this sort of cross design now that we've got a solid base for the edge we're going to have one to match at the top and we're going to have one all the way around the edge the same as this so there's like a border a square all the way around the middle of a design which is this case is going to be the cross just for demonstrations so I'm going to make this border continue on the edges and I'm going to put three on stitches here which I'm going to drop down and cover up these ones and I'm going to mirror that on this side so you see with your left or right handed you can follow it from either way they're going to cover up them ones and then I want this cross in the middle so I'm going to start I want it to come up the middle here and go off the middle there 
so these ones aren't going to be green they're going to be pink so I can put them ones on and they're going to cover them up but I want this one to start coming up I want this one to be green so I'm not going to make that one a drop down one I'm going to turn that one off and that one's going to stay green that one's not going to get covered over okay so I'm going to make these ones all pink and then we're going to carry on with row six so if you are paying attention earlier you will notice that we have all of these on stitches and if we don't lock them they're going to leave a flap so the code is dictating that we have to lock these stitches on this green B row so let's do that all of these ones get a lock stitch into them so we'll just put those in place and then remember that middle stitch I didn't put an on stitch into because I turned it off that one now gets an on stitch because that is the start of the middle of our cross and this one is now going to become green I haven't got a green thing handy but let's find one so now the design begins and the chart is dictating which ones we turn on and which ones we turn off so now for row 7 row 7 is an A row and we can already see that that one has to be turned off so let's turn that off and these ones these are the edge stitch things going on so we'll, we want those to be pink so we're going to turn those on I find the right buttons okay and now this I want to be the middle of my cross I don't want it to be pink on this bit I want these to be turned off I don't want to cover this over I want to keep that bit as a cross so I'm going to turn these off right now these ones are going to become pink And now you can start to see that our crosses appear in here. They get covered over by those drop downs. No matter which on stitch you decide to use, in which position, you can mix them up. It's still the same symbol, it's an on stitch. So now I've begun with row 8B, which is a green row, and these have already dictated that they have to be locked, so I've locked those, and because I want this cross to continue, I'm going to make this one a drop down on, so that this one now becomes green, to complete that cross. And I don't want these to be green, because that would spoil the cross shape, so I'm going to turn those off. On row 9, again, it already dictates which ones for the border, so we'll do those. And those. And then those ones below them are going to become pink because they get covered over as they drop down. This now we have the cross, and that has to be a lock stitch because there's always a lock stitch above an on stitch no matter what it is you lock it at the back avoid those flaps if you want um, that's what makes the reversible design that lock stitch and if you don't lock it you will get a slight sort of image of the front image but you won't get it reversible like this is 
this bit now I've got the cross here so I want these to be pink so I'm going to turn those on and that's row 9 complete so I hope you understand how the, how the charts are written I'm going to now remove the colour um, because on the charts these won't be blank they will have a symbol in and there is no colour so I need you to see how the charts look on the written pattern and how customizable they are um, and there are many ways in which you can use them not just this technique of mosaic crochet but you can use them for other techniques of mosaic crochet and I do also have a reversible way of doing this technique if you check out my other videos you'll be able to see that it's called crow four um, and it involves mirror stitches so in effect you are crocheting backwards it's very clever so I've turned all the counters over for all of the rows but I've left it marked what colour the A's and B rows are and as you can see it's very simple to follow because whichever way you start from whether you're left handed or right handed row one it's your foundation row row two you use yarn B it's all offs yarn A on row three it's all ons it's very simple to see where you have to go a one with changes in yarn row seven yarn A three on two off one lock two off three on what's difficult about remembering that and, and you know the movements three on you know you're doing a popcorn you do a popcorn three on if you're doing front post you know you're doing front post so it, it just flows and it's very simple without colour there is no confusion if you do want to colour it in you can do and all you have to do is follow the lines because say on row seven go down two rows make that pink 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 and then draw a line come along come along draw a line draw a line draw a line come along it's down go back up it's down go back up it's down and you end up with ziggy zag line like that going along and then and you're coloring in with your pink line and your green one you can't go there because it's already covered over so if you're coloring in your chart start at the top it's easier to start at the top to color it in than it is to go row by row because if you're coloring in from the bottom up you can't color over what you've already done you will end up with the symbol still showing but your stitch will show the color it's going to be visible as on the front of your work not on the back of your work and it I think causes confusion as to which colour you're using at the time and I just found that removing it made it very much easier to understand for all it's much more universal so I'm going to add sheets on the written pattern that is available for sale on Ravelry and with symbols on so it'll have like a sheet of ons a sheet of offs you can use the ons as locks so you just print two pages of them off you know F's and numbers and letters and if you want to print them on a coloured card to play with you can do um, but I'm sure like I said that it has more uses than what it is I've, I've used to demonstrate it as because it's code and it fascinates me I've played with it so much and I, I designed this several years ago now um, and it's sat in tubs and um, uh, yeah I needed to get it out and I, I wasn't sure how to do it because I'm not very good with technology I couldn't do the screen grabby stuff to show you very well it, it just messed with my head as you can imagine so uh, this was the easiest way and also you get something to play with if you print it off if not you can just do what I've done and draw on the card and cut them out um, but let us know in the comments below what you think whether it's a good idea if you understand it uh, whether it makes sense 